police are so inconsistent. I mean, <laughs> that's not exactly a shock, but let's be fair. Um, when the inconsistency is so apparent, it needs calling out. Now, if I black-faced myself and put on some dreadlocks wig, I'd be called a racist. I mean, we're not even allowed to see white folk on telly doing it anymore, as it's apparently some kind of insult, although it's okay for black, black folk to play white people on the telly. But that's by the by. What I was saying, if I was caught out doing that, even if it was historically, such as some of the comedians on TV who have had to have their clips removed of them doing blackface sketches and even had to apologise for it, then I'd be in a heap of trouble with the snowflakes and would probably get a knock on the door from police because somebody had accused me of being a racist. So then I wonder why Bedfordshire Police Inspector Paul Ayling has been allowed to keep his job with no charges or disciplinary action for sharing an image on Facebook with him wearing fake dreads and having covered his body in a dark tan-like substance. Not only that, before people have a go at me for falling into the trap of divide and conquer, etc, etc, he was also said to have posted statements such as boasting about grabbing a teacher's breasticle at his daughter's nursery and saying, an accidental boob grab of a nursery nurse while dropping off your daughter is the way to start any day. Now, Inspector Ayling has been with the police for 19 years, since 2003, and so the images and comments were posted whilst he was a serving police constable. But his colleagues and bosses are said to have failed to spot the images from two separate parties that he attended until a member of the public made a complaint. Now, personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with this picture, per se, unless he was actually being racist. But going to a party dressed as a rasta is not a big fucking deal. I actually don't think he should be punished for it, but my point is, if it were you or I, then we'd certainly get a knock at the door. And in this day and age, probably a conviction for a hate crime, which isn't really a conviction because hate crimes are simply made up constructs to keep us in fighting. But they are used and they do happen, so we have to talk about them. Member of the public, Mark Emsley, clearly the head soy boy and leader of the Woke Brigade, is said to have been so outraged after seeing the image that he reported ailing to Bedfordshire Police in September last year. Mark the soy boy Emsley said, It is surely one of the most racist things you can do. He is mocking another race. I find this whole episode disgraceful from start to finish. He has been working his way up to a senior position in the force, while the entire time his content has been publicly there on his social media, and not one of them have noticed. Or they have and didn't care. Then, when someone makes a complaint, it is a slap on the wrist and is back out on the beat. Now, there's no evidence whether Ailing was mocking another race. I mean, that's like saying somebody dressed as an alien is mocking another race, just for being dressed as one. There is nothing to suggest that the inspector was doing or saying anything other than dressing as a Rasta. Maybe it was a Caribbean-themed night. And for that, I don't think he should face sanctions. But then I also don't think that the general public should face those kind of sanctions either. But we do all of the time because somebody has been offended on behalf of somebody else. Emsley added, it is no wonder confidence is dropping in police. How can a force say they are anti-racist then send someone like this out there knowing he has openly mocked black people? Again, there is no evidence that mocking took place and soy boys and virtue signalling twants across the country need to get off their high horse and mind their own fucking business. Now, I think that Bedfordshire Police did the right thing and concluded that the images were not racist by their nature, which has to be the only conclusion because there is no evidence of racism. But then my point in this report is that if it were you or I, then that certainly wouldn't have been the outcome. The police would have jumped on a hate crime report with every resource they have, as we see all too often, which is why I say there is no consistency and exactly the reason why so-called hate crimes should simply be scrapped and we go back to using the good old nothing wrong with it Public Order Act, which covers everything, including people being racist. DCI Ben Martin of Cambridgeshire Police admitted the posts were distasteful and insensitive, but stressed they were very old. He said, they are not in my mind the same as, use, the, same as the use of racist language or derogatory language towards people of different backgrounds, for example. The posts are also a number of years old. While this is not an excuse, it is true to say that society in 2022 is different to society in 2010. Now, to me, it doesn't matter whether they are a number of years old or days old. It shouldn't even come into it. But what should come into it is exactly what DCI Martin just said. If there was use of racist language or derogatory language, 
although derogatory could simply mean you saying that you don't like a certain type of person, which in itself isn't racist and shouldn't really be a factor, in my opinion. But Bedfordshire Police Deputy Chief Constable Dan Vajzovic, but Vajzovic said the posts are abhorrent and completely unacceptable by the standards and culture that has developed over the last decade adding that they do not reflect the values of the service and saying that the posts have been removed from all of the ailings of social media accounts while he was investigated for his conduct. Now I have to say that this is a complete overreaction by a single member of the public, a soy boy at that, and Bed's Deputy Chief Inspector Dan Vajcevic. I mean you only have to notice his name to understand why he's so worked up about it, being of a foreign background himself. Now, this isn't the normal type of video I would do. I'm, I mean, I'm kind of sticking up for a police inspector here, but I do believe this is a force issue and not an individual inspector's issue. I've got no doubt that Bed's police have arrested many people for far less and given many people hate crime markers on their records. And this is what annoys me. The way that we are treated versus how they treat their own. Again, I'm not saying that Inspector Ailing should be sacked and punished. Yes, have a word about the slightly inappropriate comment about touching a teacher's breasticle, but the rest, no. There's no real issue with that. But this is where the police need to start understanding that just because somebody says something is racist or discriminatory, doesn't mean that it is. And so arresting people for comments such as trans women are men, which biologically they are, and I believe, or other similarly factual comments is utterly ridiculous and police and public need to realise that. And if they're going to come after the public with harshness, then they should do the same with their own, even if they've been a bobby for 19 years. But also, if they're going to treat this incident the way they have, then they need to be treating the public in the same way. What do you think? Do you think Inspector Ailing has been let off lightly and deserves more punishment? Do you think that it was a reasonable punishment for, you know, He's not been punished. Do you think that's reasonable? Do you think the police are inconsistent in their approach to their buddies versus the public? Let me know what you think about this story in the comments below.